Welcome to the second Sunday of creation season. Last week we marveled at the sky, looked at the clouds, noticed the stars. This week we will consider the creatures who share this planet with us. The short excerpt from Genesis starts us off with the story of God creating all the animals and then giving them to Adam to name. Can you imagine how cool that was? Like God brings up a, a lizard and you get to name it a lizard. God brings up a mouse and you get to name it a mouse. God brings up an ostrich and you get to say, what were you thinking when you created this strange creature and named it an ostrich? All of those things bring me joy when I think about them. And those who created this creation season marked this as the scripture to read for today because it shows the great variety of creatures that God has created to populate the earth. So today we not only thank God for animals, but we gather together with them and we bless them. And I've been thinking a lot about blessing over the past few weeks. We use that word a lot. We say the blessing before we eat. Whenever anyone sneezes, we say, we bless food at dinner. We priests bless people at the communion rail. We bless those who sick, those who get married, a congregation at the end of a service. We bless houses, we bless boats. We will basically bless virtually anything. And all of us bless ourselves. Now when we bless something, we're not conferring some kind of holy magic on them. No, rather when we bless someone, we are reminding them and reminding us that we are holy and beloved creatures of God, that they are holy and beloved creatures of God. Sometimes the only way that we can remember that is when we bless ourselves and we say, I am a holy and beautiful creation of God. Now each year on Blessing of the Animal Sunday, at one of the, serv so one of the services is graced with our Norfolk Terriers, Skipper and Abby. We do tend to spread the wealth because everyone knows when Skipper and Abby are in the room. This year it was the eight o'clock service. They were just as Skipper and Abby as usual. And each year when I bless them, Barbara and I say, maybe this will be the year that it will stick and they'll become model dogs. Now, of course, that's not what we're doing with a blessing. And of course, we wouldn't want that to happen anyway. Because if Skipper and Abby were model dogs, they wouldn't be Norfolk Terriers and they wouldn't be Skipper and Abby. And just as they are, in all of their demented love for being alive, Skipper and Abby are God's blessing to us. They keep me from taking myself too seriously, which is something I can do. They keep me from missing the ordinary and fascinating things all around me. They remind me that there is a chipmunk in the yard. There is someone at the door. Usually it's no one, by the way. Or it's time for dinner. Let's eat right now. If we're not careful, we miss the now as we mourn yesterday or think about tomorrow. Skipper and Abby cannot care for themselves, and they let us know when they need something or want something. In caring for them, I am reminded that there are times when I need something or want something, but it's my job to ask. As hard as it can be to accept, sometimes we need help. We cannot always control everything in our lives. So for these and so many other reasons, we gather today to thank God for animals and to bless them to remember that animals are infused with God's grace. They are here for us to admire and love and be intrigued by and wonder at, cry for, laugh at, and hold. If we look carefully, we will see a piece of God in their eyes. On this day when we gather and bless our pets, the gospel tells the story of Jesus blessing a child. And like we bless pets today, Jesus names the holiness of a child. And Jesus says to live fully in God's kingdom, we must strive to be like a child. Now remember, when Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, he's not talking about somewhere we're going to go when we die. He's talking about living in the kingdom of heaven here. And what might Jesus, might, what might Jesus mean by saying that we need to live in the kingdom of heaven by being like a child? And why is this the reading that's chosen for today? Could it be that children and pets teach similar lessons. And I'm not saying we are mommies and daddies of our pets or that they are the same thing as children, but I'm saying they do have a lesson in common. 
And I know that now. I didn't know it for a while because although I taught school, I was around children who were aged maybe three or four all the way through 18. I had never been in the presence for any length of time of an infant or a toddler. And Barbara and I spent last Monday morning with our great niece. Ines is about 14 months old and we take great delight in her. She's becoming a little girl. And wow, does she now have a mind of her own. Even before she can talk well, she has mastered the I am woman, you are worm look that is going to stand her in great stead as she grows. Whenever she pulls that face, it's really cute and maybe a little scary. Like our pups, Ines is, is, lives in what is happening right now. This toy, this book, this outside, this nap, this food. She does not consider what just happened even an hour ago. She does not wonder what's going to happen in the future. She laughs one minute, scowls the next, and knows that she is charming our socks off no matter what she does. When I watch Ines discover things for the first time, I realize just how confusing and wonder-filled this world can be. And when I'm with her, focused on her, I get drawn back into the world of now. I remember to consider and notice what is happening in front of me, to focus on this person, this view, this watermelon. Ines, much as she wants to, cannot do everything for herself. And she, too, is very clear when she wants or needs something. As Jesus said, when I do all of these things, I live more fully in God's kingdom than in the human one. See, here's the thing that we human adults know that our pets and our littles do not know. The only thing that we are guaranteed is this moment, right here and right now. The future is coming, but we don't really know what's going to happen then. And as much as we wish it were different, most of what lies in the future is not something that we can control. We do know what is happening right now. And no matter whether right now is hard or lovely, each moment contains at least a fraction of wonder or solace. We just have to make the time and effort to see it. We can't make the mistake of letting extraordinary hopes mask the extraordinary normality all around us. Not all of us have children or pets. However, all of us are surrounded by God's creatures in our everyday lives. Bird song is beautiful. Chipmunks are cute. And squirrels, they're hilarious. And wherever you are, you will find evidence of God's creative spirit. So on this second week of creation season, we are challenged to take time to notice God's creatures, pets or otherwise. Notice their beauty. Notice how funny they are, the magical ways that they enhance our world. There is so much that animals can teach us about ourselves and about a God of abundant imagination who fashioned both the lion and the ostrich, the elephant, and for some reason, the mosquito. May all of God's creatures speak to our hearts in ways that bring beauty and laughter and a little bit of respite from the world. May we rekindle our love for the world that is so deeply loved by our God. In the name of the one who created and loved us, amen.